Hi everyone. Right, well I've got a lovely project that I'm going to do today um, and that is I'm going to give some love and attention uh, to some of my many heucras that I have around the garden. Um, I'll give love and attention to some and I'll be quite brutally splitting some of the, the other ones. Um, so I love heucheras, they're very hard working plants. Uh, this is a heuchera. Um, I think this one is called plum pudding. Um, they've got lovely names. This one is called marmalade. I've, my husband's just bought me one which is called watermelon, which is actually the colour of the inside of a watermelon. Um, and what normally happens is throughout the summer, really into sort of very late autumn, early winter. Um, the foliage still looks really good in my heucheras. It gives a lot of winter interest in my garden when it's much needed. Um, and then throughout the winter, the leaves become sort of scrattier looking um, until the look, some of them can look positively almost dead. And then usually I wait and in the spring, I'll start dividing them or trimming them back and then off the go again and uh, went to another year and everything's fine. Well, um, the earth is frozen outside. Um, it's actually two degrees in the greenhouse today, but um, outside it's just bitter cold. So there's not much I can be doing outside. So I thought, what can I do? I'm going to do the heucheras. So I'll take the camera and I'll show you the condition of some of um, the many heucheras that I have around the garden. So I'll show you some of the heucheras that I've got. Beautiful purple ones here. Um, he's a bit worrying. Um, he's a bit rocky there might have a vine weevil in there, I don't know. Then a nice coppery coloured one, um, another copper coloured one there. I've got this couple here, which are lovely. Now I think this one, what's this one? Heucra cherry truffles, that's lovely. And then a more purpley one, oh, the labels. You can't read the label on that one. Um, so yeah, really tough little plants. Got one here growing in a pot with um, a beautiful hellebore there. But um, the temperature is two degrees now um, and it's midday. So goodness knows what it's dropped to overnight. Um, and this is the sort of condition that the heucheras are in. I've got another little one there. And, you know, you have to look past this dead top foliage here down to the new leaves that are growing. Even at these sub-zero temperatures, it was sort of minus four. Well, it's been minus four for about three days now. Um, and the, the new foliage is fine. Then I have this gorgeous one here. Um, again, lost the label, so I'm not sure um, what this one's called. But lovely zingy lime colour. And this one here, which this basket did look gorgeous. Um, and then I have uh, the latest edition, which uh, my husband's just bought me. And this heuchera is heuchera, what, what's that? Carnival watermelon. Um, and he's paid $9.99 for that. Um, just absolutely love it. It is the colour of watermelon flesh. Um, so in the past, my instinct would be um, to keep that as healthy as possible um, until the spring, and then expect to get to get this plant to perform right the way through the summer. But I've grown so many heucheras over the years that I know that. When the foliage has lasted this long, and this is shop bought, so this has probably been very protected. If it had been outside, it would look like the rest of my heucheras in the garden. So as brutal as it may seem, 
I do think I'm going to split this one as well. I'll cut the top foliage off, split the plant. Um, and then by the time, you know, two, three months comes along and it's spring, um, I won't just have one watermelon heuchera, I'll have two or three. And in the greenhouse, I found another couple of heucheras that I've obviously bought in the sale um, for £2. They have been £7.99. This one's heuchera marmalade. I think these are both, yeah, both heuchera marmalade. So again, lots of dead foliage here, but in the middle there, lovely and healthy. So there's various things you can do with your heucheras to multiply um, the number that you have. So this heuchera here, plum pudding, is in a nice pot. Um, and what I could do with this is I could just get the leaves, um, cut them all off, and then keep it in the greenhouse, um, give, just to give it that bit more heat. And then in the spring, this will all just take off and I'll have a lovely heuchera in lovely condition. Or you could maybe just leave that top foliage on and take these, I don't want to catch any of the new ones coming through, take, take the scratty leaves off from around the outside and sort of neaten it up that way. So this particular heuchera here is one of the best conditioned ones. And that would just, you know, if you do, if you want your winter interest to keep going, that's what you could do. And he looks better already, doesn't he? So he could go back outside and that would be fine. So for me, there's basically three main ways you can deal with your heucheras at this time of year. Um, one is if you're not particularly bothered about getting any more heucheras, so you could take a heuchera like that, you could trim off the dead leaves, in fact you could take off most of the foliage, take it out of its pot, give it a root trim, put it back into the same pot even because the roots would be smaller then with some new compost and off you go. Um, the second thing you could do, the very definite split there, so I've got one heuchera here and then another heuchera crown there. So I could tip him out of his pot, um, get my saw, saw down the middle, and put them into the two cuttings into two separate pots. Um, I say cuttings, each of these splits would have a root ball attached to it. So it's not starting from scratch. It would just go into a new pot with new compost and the roots that were there would then start growing. The other thing you could do is you could take a heuchera like this um, and I'll show you how to do this in a moment. You could take a heuchera like this, tip him out of his pot um, and then you could take sort of stem i think they're called stem cutting so you're actually cutting bits of the stem there's no root attached to them at all fill a seed tray with compost and you put those little stem cuttings in there and then they would go onto a heated mat if you've got one or um, maybe like a windowsill above a radiator somewhere where they would get heat and I'll show you the heated mat that I use. I've had it for years and years. So this is my heated mat. Um, it's been stored away in the garage um, for a year. So I've plugged it in to see if it's working and already I can feel um, the warmth coming through. So it'll go all supple and pliable. Um, and what I'm gonna do, it's waterproof. So you put your seed trays on, um, and then you can water them and it doesn't matter that the bottoms are a bit damp. Um, and this will give your seeds or your cuttings bottom heat. Um, it helps them grow roots or germinate. So I'm gonna keep this in the conservatory now and I'm gonna put my seed trays with my heuchera cuttings on here for probably a couple of weeks, just until I can look at the bottom of the seed tray, make sure that they've got some um, roots growing. Right, so I'm going to fill the seed tray up ready with nice peat-free compost. 
as I say, I've generally waited until the spring to do it, but you know, I just want a head start. I want to get as much done and out the way. So by the time the spring comes round, um, I know I say this every year, but I want to hit the ground running in the spring. Right, so we'll just tip that out. Oh, it's frozen. Right, let's have a look at this bonny one. Now, that's frozen as well. Right, so I've had a brainwave. Instead of having to wait days, maybe even weeks, for these pots to, um, the earth to defrost in these pots, I'm going to put each plant on the heated mat um, and defrost the soil that way. And I don't think it'll hurt them at, at all because I am going to be tipping them out the pot anyway and splitting them. So um, I've just brought in um, a few of them out of the garden. It's amazing when you go around the garden how many cucumbers I've got. And I've checked the bottoms of the pots to make sure that I'm not bringing in any snails or slugs. Any of the cucumbers that look a bit poorly, like there was definitely one there that looks like it's got vine weevil. I haven't brought that in, I've just left that out in the cold to put a little thing. But um, it, it won't dry, we'll, we'll save them. So yeah, I'm going to just leave these on the heated mat for a few hours and then when they're defrosted, probably tomorrow, um, I'll show you how to split them up. Right, well it's the next morning. It's positively tropical today. It's six degrees Celsius outside. Um, so I left the heucras on the heated mat for a, a four hours yesterday and then I switched it off and left them overnight. So as soon as I picked these plants up I could tell that the soil was completely defrosted because they're just soft and squidgy. So I'm going to be able to work with these fine. Right, so you tip it out of its pot. Yeah, that soil's lovely. And what you're looking for, particularly with heuchera, is vine weevil. Vine weevils are tiny little sort of C-shaped, brilliant white, um, like slugs. So I've got some little slugs there, but that's not vine weevil. Now, what I think I'll show you here with this one is I'll split the plant down the middle. Can you see? You can, I can very clearly split that with my fingers. So you just saw down the middle of it. And that is the half that I'm going to put back into the pot that I took it out of. So I'm going to be harsh. I'm going to cut all the leaves off so that none of the energy is going to go into feeding those leaves it's going to go into making new roots and then once the root system develops in a couple of months time um, then in the spring when the weather is much more temperate then that plant will just take off then put some new in the bottom to about there i'm going to take some of this old compost off And that's a nice little plug plant and you can see it's got little roots there already pop him in some new compost and what i was doing when i had the um when i had the heuchera out the pot there when I'm looking at it here and loosening the soil off, I'm looking for those telltale signs of vine weevil. But the thing is, this plant is was very sturdy. Usually when they've got vine weevil, they'll rock. Um, so they might, they might just look a bit bedraggled, but it's the crown of the plant that goes weak. Oh. I've left one or two leaves just to show me that that is a heuchera. And then what I'm going to do is I've bought this roll of 
handy bubble wrap and I'm just going to wrap the pot in that should have some cellar tape but I haven't and then that will stand on either the shelf or probably the floor in my greenhouse and this bubble wrap will just add an extra protection against the extreme cold temperatures whilst this little plant develops a new root ball right now with this bit of the plant again i'm just going to gently break the soil away from it i'm looking for vine weevil So this is the other part of that heuchera. I think that size pot for him. If you put something, a plant in a, a pot that's too big for it, so a plant that big, if you put him in a pot that size, all that would happen is when you water the soil, that plant would be sitting in a load of soggy soil and those roots couldn't possibly drink up that moisture. In a pot, uh, a more appropriate size pot that size, and we fill him up, then that root ball will very quickly fill that space and he'll be able to take up any excess excess moisture so a nice crumbly growing medium is great it should retain enough moisture to keep the plant alive but it should be free draining as well and free draining means it has to be loose so any organic matter you can add will loosen that soil structure whether it be bark or your homemade compost or leaf mold and I'll remember to give these all a drink. Um, I will give them a, a bit of water just to sort of settle that new soil around the, the roots in a minute. Right, now again, I'm gonna take all of the sort of scratchy leaves off this and um, just leave a few new ones in the middle. Now, if this plant was you might be thinking, why, why cut the leaves off? Surely the leaves will protect the crown of the plant. And that's absolutely true if the plant was outside in your garden over the winter. But these aren't going out in the garden. So if you um, have, say, oh, I don't know, salvia or penstem and something like that, and it's got a lot of leaves on, it does protect the crown. Um, and very quickly i'm going to have some beautiful new heuchera so they have got two two heucheras out of the one plant right now i'm going to show you this one i'm going to hopefully get some stem cuttings out of this one tip it out got lots of crop in the bottom there so I'm going to saw the bottom off this. I should be doing it the other way so you can see it. So you don't need all that matted soil. We go in there. Right, and now we start breaking the soil away from the stem of the plant. So what I'm going to do here is I want a lot of stem cuttings here. And these are the ones that I'm going to put into a seed tray um, and I'm going to put them on the heated mat because these little stem cuttings aren't going to have any roots and it's a, a good way of getting not just you know splitting your beautiful heuchera into two you can get sort of up to 20 little heucheras identical heucheras when you do the stem cuttings is I'm going to cut off all of the roots. And what I've got are lots of little bits of heuchera. So you see that sort of basal bit there? Snip them off. And 
and each one of these by the spring will have made an identical replica of the parent plant so you've got to be brave <laughs> saw that one in half See, when I said I was going to be brutal, I definitely was, wasn't I? There's one. There's one. There's my tray of compost. And what you do is you cut all of these raggedy bits of stem off and any big leaves. You just clean the little stem up. And then you need a nice clean cut at the bottom. You need it like that. And you just poke it into the compost like that. This one, this one hasn't got any leaves on it, but it doesn't matter. Take all these little stems off. That's my stem at the bottom and I want a nice flat clean white plate there put him in there like that so um, this is the difference um, between between that splitting the heucra so he has got a substantial amount of root left and he's in a pot and protected so he can feed those leaves but these the way i'm cutting them here they have no root whatsoever so if i just left them out in this cold greenhouse they would not make new roots And you want to press your um, compost down, I should have said that, nice and flat because you want that plate to have a good contact with its new compost. That's it. And then I'm going to water these from below. And you might think, oh, that's far too fiddly. Um, and why bother? Well, the thing is, if you love that particular heucra and each heucra is costing you, say, £10, um, if you split that heucra up, if you're brave enough to do this, and it's always worked for me in the past, um, then you might get 10, even off a big heucra, you might get up to 20 plants out of it. And then the foot cost you, what, a pound each or 50 pence each. How bargainous is that? And I will keep you informed on how, how these little cuttings are doing. I'm actually going to keep those two little leaves on there. Right, so that's that one. And now what I'm going to do is I'll stop chatting and I'll just speed the film up and you can see me doing some of, of the other ones. I think what I'll do next is I'm going to do exactly the same with this heucra that I did with this one. And this one is called, oh, this is marmalade. And this was one of my £2 bargain ones. So if I get, say, well, how many I've got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of there. If I get the same number out of there, you know what I mean? How cheap is that? I'll let you do the math. This one's coming apart really easily. I think it must have just been, well, I only bought it last year. This must be a, a new plant. That one has actually got lots of little roots attached to it already these don't even need to go into that tree because i'm actually not going to cut 
um, the roots off these little ones. I'm just going to divide them. So take off those. Right, now have I got any nine centimetre pots in here? I'm going to use it as these little trays and they'll be fine living in though in these until um until the spring and then I'll put them in bigger pots. So let's see. Yeah, one really sweet little plant there. So I think these were the, yeah, these were the two pound ones. So let's see how many we get out of this. Now you see, um, you see this one here. Well, that is what I'm hoping these ones will be like in about, um, I would say, a fortnight's time. And when they've got a good carpet of roots, then you can pick them out and put them, put them on into little nine centimeter pots. You know, you're talking a fortnight's time. It's nothing. But this is how in April, May, these are going to be fully fledged plants. And I'm going to just have a beautiful array of heuchera. So the little so the little cuttings that had roots I've put in soil and the bits that are left that haven't got many roots, um, I'm taking those stem cuttings. There we go. So I'm really hedging my bets here. That's a nice one there. Right, so we'll take this one out. This is beautiful. Um, I bought this from um, a stall in uh, the market in our town. And every week during the summer, this lady brings all of her plants down and she sells them on. They're really reasonable. I think I paid £3 for him. Um, of mixed heuchera stem cuttings. I'm going to water that and put it on my heated mat and I'll show you that again in two weeks time. Um, and then I've got all of these little plants which just need a bit of sellotape to hold the bubble wrap in place. So, um, oh, and these ones as well. 